What's up everyone and welcome back to the ninth video in the Python tutorial series. In this video we're going to be covering break and continue statements and so this is actually going to be kind of the culmination of a lot of the previous videos we've done. So we're going to be doing for loops, we're going to use the range function, we're going to do if else, and then we're going to also add in break statements and continue statements. So for today what we're going to work on is basically a simple system that's going to find prime numbers. I'm going to type this out and then I'm going to explain what it's doing. So basically this is like we've done in the past. We're going to do 4n in range 2 through 10. So it's going to go it's going to look at the number 2, then the number 3, then the number 4, all the way up to 9, but not including 9. So it's only going up to 9. And then within that, it's going to look through the numbers 2 to n. So it's going to start at 2 to 2, which is nothing, because the range of 2 to 2 is 0. Then after that, it's going to do... 2 to 3 because it's n is going to be equal to 3. I'll, I'll print it out later once we have a little bit more to show and I'll explain. And then in this line what we're doing is an if statement and we're using the modulo low command. So basically we're going to take n modulo x which is basically what's the remainder of this division. So it's n divided by x and then whatever the remainder is. And if it's equal to 0, that means that the x is a factor of n, which means that it's not a prime number. And then here what we did is basically we just made a statement. We're doing print the number n, so it might be 2, 3, 4, whatever, equals x times and then whatever the ground division n divided by divided by x was. So if we find a factor of n, then we're going to break out of this for loop and it's going to move on to the next number. So instead of, say if it's looking at the number 9, which is the highest number, it's going to get up to 3, and it's going to find that 3 times 3 equals 9, and so there's no reason to check 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because we know that 3 times 3 already makes it a non-prime number, or, a, yeah, a non-prime number. And basically what this statement is, is if, if we don't find a factor that creates a zero remainder, then we can assume that the number is prime. So I'm going to run this. I'll scoot it up a little bit. And we can see it found two is a prime number, three. Four, it found 2 times 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in some print statements so we can see a little bit better what it's doing. So it's going to print n every time and it's going to print x every time. And so we can see it did 2, it printed 2. And then for x, it didn't print anything because it was the range of 2 to 2, which is nothing. And so it just skipped directly down to 2 as a prime number. Then we check 3, 3 being n, and then x is 2. 
and then we find 3 divided by 2 does not get a remainder of 0 so then it is a prime number because that's the only number we can check then we move on to 4 and 4 checks 2 first and it finds that 4 equals 2 times 2 so it is not a prime number and so basically that's the flow it's doing and like the example I expa explained before it's going to check 9 or it's the last number is 9 in the first range and then in the number it's checking it's going to check 2 didn't find anything it's going to check 3 and then it finds that 9 equals 3 times 3 and because of the break statement instead of continuing through the for loop it breaks out of this for loop and it moves to the next number in this for loop and that's basically the usage of the for loop and then the next thing we're going to work on I'm going to just clear this off we're going to check to see if a number is even and we're going to change this to num to be consistent with what they did and we can print that and it's going to find an even number found a number and so basically what this is doing it's doing the same modulo check it's saying if a number is divided by 2 and it has a remainder of 0 then we're gonna print found an even number but if it doesn't then we're gonna print just found a number and what continue is doing is continue is just moving it back to the beginning of the for loop and continuing on the next letter so if we didn't have this statement show you what it does it's going to print found an even number and then it also found a number two and so what the continue statement is doing is instead of continuing down to the next line it goes to the next number in the for loop so I'm gonna I'm gonna have these run side by side so you can see exactly what it's doing differently so we can see on the top one with the continue statement it's found an even number found a number three but down here it's found an even number found a number two so it's doing both statements when we don't want it to so the continue is very useful if we want it to just move on to the next item within a for loop or a while loop I think actually just just a for loop sorry I misspoke but that makes it so we can move on giving the correct condition which is very useful when we're programming that's gonna be it for the break and continue statement in the next one we're gonna be doing the past state <coughs> <coughs> sorry the past statement